It is the Blitz here on 94.1 at San Antonio Sports Star. He's Joe Reinagle. <laughs> I'm Jay Semenix. Joining us on the Buyer's Barricade at guest line, our good buddy, RJ Ochoa, who will soon be sleeping on a couch in the second, I don't know, family room. In the attic. Wherever. He slept in a cubby <laughs> hole one year in the Hobbit House in Oxnard as we get out to Oxnard for AA Best Bail Bonds Dallas Cowboys training camp coverage. And RJ, as I wrote this morning on SASportsStar.com, Looked like the Cowboys were gearing up for a drama-free start to training camp, but uh, Zach Martin has decided to change that part. Well, it's great to be with you guys. I did sleep in a cubby hole. Uh, Rob serenaded me with snoring. Uh, that was a great time. Uh, that was. I didn't know that you you uh, you were writing these days, Jason. So that's great to hear. I appreciate uh, I you checking to... SASportsStar.com on the regular well, for no, all I, our great I, columns, I, man. Much appreciated. I I knew I was coming on here today, so I was going to hear, uh, you mm -hmm. know, a whole lot of explanation. Uh, but, um, yeah, uh, I was walking the dog this morning thinking like, oh, we're just kind of counting down the days until, you know, Jason's going to be busting me every day out on the tennis courts. But no, no, no. Um, it's it's got to get intense. It's got to get real. Uh, this is, you know, look, I, I still think Trayvon Diggs might hold out. I, I mean, I don't have any, like, intel on that, but, like, if I was him, I would. The Cowboys are stuck right now. And if you're somebody who wants a bag from them, by all means, like good for Zach. Like a good for Zach for taking advantage of an opportunity to maximize his earnings potential when they're weak relative to everything they have to take care of. So, I mean, they're, they're stuck. They have to pay him because if they don't, they're really up a creek. Boy, RJ, exactly. And, and Jason and I have been talking about that because – Look, I'm 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 normally a guy that if you sign a contract, you know, fulfill the contract, okay? But if you're Zach Martin and you're the biggest piece in the foundation of that offensive line and you're not happy and you're holding out or whatever the case may be, you've got to pay this guy. You've got to figure out a way to get it done with him before you do anybody else. Well, we're at a time where, like, all that's left to do before training camp starts is, like, rank everything, right? Like, everybody's <laughs> got a list of something. Um, and anywhere you look, Zach is number one. ESPN's executive coaches, scouts, Paul, he's the best interior lineman. Madden's got him 99 overall. PFF, PFN, ABC, XYZ, they all have him as the number one. And even if that, you know, what you said weren't true, Joe, which I think it is, like, will he be number one next year? Will, will there be as much of a consensus, right? Like, why why risk that? Like, why go into this year? You never know what's going to happen. You're older. It's your 10th NFL season. And right now, you can say really cool things about Zach Martin, right? Like, oh, of his nine years, eight of them, he's been an all-pro. Mm -hmm. Eight of them, he's been a pro bowler. Maybe next year, you're saying eight out of 10. Your percentage and everything drips, like, or dips, excuse me. So if your batting average right now is like 0.981, why take a risk of going into next year when it's 0 0.802, which is still really good, but not the sterling mark that you had at this point in time. RJ Ochoa from bloggingtheboys.com joining us here on The Blitz. When you think about the kind of person and teammate Zach Martin is, I read the tweet from Schefter. And I think about Zach holding out or not participating in OTAs and minicamp because of, quote unquote, soft tissue injury, want to be ready for camp. Mm -hmm. it, it, if you're Steven and, you know, everybody has their time, it's not time. You're two years away. It, it kind of feels like the tweet from Schefter is Zach is frustrated at this point because the Cowboys are unwilling to talk to him. Knowing his importance, are you surprised that the Cowboys didn't respond in a more positive way? No, I mean, because I, I think they're probably a little miffed, and understandably so, like in a business sense, right? And I, I think that Zach, I mean, I'm, I'm purely reading tea leaves here, um, like Professor Trelawney in Harry Potter. I know y'all are really familiar with that reference. Who? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, she, she's the divination professor. It's really, uh, you know, we don't care. Thing. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but I mean, if you, if you look at social media, like Zach, CD, Micah, they all shared that uh, Zach Martin 99 overall graphic on their Instagram stories today, all after this report, right? Like, there's no universe where they're unaware of this news and they're still, you know, sharing that he's their guy. Like, if there is a future Hall of Famer on the team right now, all due respect to Micah Parsons, it's Zach Martin. And so I think everyone's like down for this. Everyone's like, hey, pay him, but you got to pay everybody. And so, I mean, I, I think the Cowboys are, are probably realizing, I mean, there was a report from ESPN's Todd Archer that they had conversations at the combine. So you're talking about it was five months ago, right? 
and give Zach some props. He waited five months to kind of, you know, to, you know, pull this, this lever, right. To flip this switch. And he was very smart about it. He picked a dead time where he would be the most dominant story in the NFL. He picked the day that he got his Madden overall rating. I don't know if you guys saw, but yesterday the dude tweeted, which does not happen. <laughs> yesterday he, he tweeted organically. And by that, I mean, not a retweet for the first time since March of 2020. And so he just came out and was like, tweeting and sharing like these rankings did he put it on threads <laughs> he did not well i really don't know to be to be frank with you but he was on his instagram being active and i was kind of like what's going on i honestly thought like maybe this dude's gearing up for post retirement wants to be in the booth or whatever but it seems like he's trying to kind of curry some favor among the fan base and it feels like in the court of public opinion zach is winning I don't think there's any question about it. I mean, just with that offensive line and what he means to that uh, to that unit is everything. And I think he's got to – Jerry's got to take this serious and, and get this thing done. Now, RJ, we were talking, and I, I really want to get your opinion on this because with all the contracts that the Cowboys are, are that are coming up and they're going to have to do, and then you throw in Zach Martin – are, are the Cowboys going to be able to keep all of these guys? And I'm talking about Micah Parsons, C.D. Lamb, Trayvon Diggs. If you extend Dak Prescott, you sign Terrence Steele. I mean, that's a lot of guys to get contracts done. Can they keep all of those guys? It kind of comes down to a group of about, if you're lucky, seven to nine players. This is something Bob Sturm wrote about this offseason. And you ultimately devote like the majority of your salary cap space to these guys, right? Like generally your quarterback is a part of that, your left tackle, your franchise pass rusher, maybe a star cornerback. You can't do it all. You can manipulate the salary cap, but it does exist. It, it is a, you know, like our Twitter threads, our Twitter timelines, there is a rate that, that has a limit. Um, and so, you know, who do you want to put in that club? Who's among your seven to nine? Is Trayvon Diggs one of those guys? Is Terrence Steele? Is Tyler Biotish? Like, there will be somebody left out in the cold. But where Zach Martin is in a unique spot is, like, he knows all this. I mean, the time is running out. Trayvon Diggs, Terrence Steele, Tyler Biotis, Tony Pollard, if you want to include him, they are all in the final years of their contract. And, yeah, sure, they could utilize the franchise tag on somebody next year. The franchise tag for Trayvon Diggs is stupid expensive. And that's where the Micah Parsons conversation becomes real. And if they don't get the DAC deal done this offseason, not only is his cap figure massive for 2024, but – I mean, this is if they don't do Dak, it, it, and I don't mean to be dramatic, it suggests that they want an out. Because if they don't touch Dak Prescott's deal, they can get out of it after 2024. He would have to be on the books for like 50 million bajillion dollars next year, but it would give them the opportunity to move on from him in 2025. So in addition to like all of the mathematics and economics involved, you now have to deal with the, the narrative that you put in the past two years ago with this Dak dance back and forth, that would be really annoying as well. RJ Ocho from bloggingtheboys.com. By, uh, by all, everything that we've heard, Dak will get a new deal done because they still believe in Dak. And, and I'm with you. If they don't get it done, part of that might be on Dak because he's proven he's not going to take a hometown discount or take less than what he thinks he is worth. But they're not going to make him go play a prove it year, but they almost have to get a new deal done to free up money from some, for, for all those other guys that want to get paid. But if you look at all the guys that are due and you had to lose one, which one would be the first off the boat in your mind? I mean, if you're not counting Terrence Steele or Tyler Biotis, because those are kind of cheating answers right there. They're not in the same tier. It's probably Trayvon Diggs, just because you, you can argue that, that his greatness is a little bit hit or miss. He has the, like, all or nothing kind of reputation, whereas, you know, Dak, CD, Micah, obviously, Zach, they're more consistently great. Um, and where the Trayvon thing is complicated is the Bills can get out of his brother's deal next year, too. And so, you know, if we do enter a world in 2024 where Trayvon Diggs is an unrestricted free agent, I mean, th they have made it very, very well known that they want to play together. So now you're not just negotiating for a top tier cornerback contract. You're also negotiating for a top tier wide receiver deal while you have to get this CD Lamb deal done. So you could consider getting a Trayvon deal done now if you do want Stephon Diggs on your team in the future as, as acquiring sort of a bird in the hand um, and, and not leaving two in the bush for the future. But you you just and, and that's the thing, like if you don't want Trayvon on your team in 2024, fine. But decide that now. Commit to that now. What you cannot do is say, 
we'll just kick this can down the road. We'll talk again in March of next year. No, it's going to get ridiculously expensive with everybody involved, even with more salary cap space coming, because you have to pay quarterback money. You have to pay star wide receiver money. And on the wide receiver front, if you don't beat Justin Jefferson, if you don't beat Jamar Chase, C.D. Lamb is not a better player than them, but in a world of supply and demand, that does not matter. And his numbers going to go up the moment that they're pen hits paper too. Well, and and I agree with you on Trayvon. We're looking at it. We're looking at at, at uh, cornerback contracts, and so you're probably looking at somewhere fifteen to twenty million dollars a year for a guy like Trayvon Diggs. And well, I just don't know if that's there. But I agree with you. I think if anybody's the odd man out in that group, it's got to be Diggs. It's tough. I mean, you you ultimately can't have a million, you know, players who are 53 players, I guess, who are the highest paid at their respective position. But whenever Dak signs, he's going to be the highest paid quarterback until the next one comes. You're also racing Herbert and Burrow on that front. Whenever Micah signs, he's obviously going to be the highest paid. You mentioned the number 20. Right now, the highest paid interior offensive lineman is Quentin Nelson. He's getting 20 million a year. You know, it, it just, the numbers go up. And, yep. and they are all, they are all relative. They're all the same percentages as they've been ever since the institution of the salary cap. But you have to figure this out. And what's, what's even more is if they don't figure this out, they told us a year ago, and to their credit, they were a very good team and they positioned themselves well now. But they said, look, we can't do anything with Amari. We can't bring Randy Gregory back. We have to let go of Lyell because we're earmarking all of this money for CD and for Trayvon. Okay, you told us that. We whined and we complained and we moaned and we groaned. But if you don't do that, what did you do? What, what was the, the shoe that dropped with all the pennies that you hoarded? There has to be, this is the rainy day. It's, it's time to smash the piggy bank and break it open because Zach Martin literally made it rain and soon enough his bank account will explode. How quickly into Oxnard do you expect Zach Martin to have a new deal? When's the state of the union? I mean, I, 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 <laughs> tomorrow, I, I would, you know, I mean, they're, you know, well, I, I, and I say in, in all seriousness, we've seen and we've all been there at training camp when new contracts have been done, when there's been some some stuff. I, I remember a time and RJ, I believe you were there. We did an interview with Travis Frederick, like, yep. I don't know, at one thirty and at three o'clock, they announced his new deal. Like he left our interview session, went to Jerry's room and came out with a new contract. Remember that? I mean, it, when when do you expect, you know, because some of this is this vet move on the part of Zach Martin. Can I get a week or two of not going to camp and, and <laughs> doing stuff? I mean, how much of this is vet move on Zach Martin's part? Just to be clear for the audience's sake, every day that a player is not in training camp, they're fined $50,000. For the new CBA that was negotiated three years ago, that dollar amount cannot be waived by teams the way it could in the past. So even if the Cowboys broker a new deal with Zach, they can't say, hey, man, you're good for that 300K that you missed for that week you were gone. So what I would imagine is Zach will be there. He might not practice. Right? It might be more of like a hold-in situation. Soft the tissue injury. Is recorded. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, they're going to be, you know, they're going to be the Cowboys about it. That's what I was saying. Like, what is the day that Jerry's holding the big old bad press conference on the tennis court? That There is going to be a moment that makes sense. What's the day Hard Knocks premieres where the Jets are going to get the love? You know what I'm saying? That's when Jerry's going to swoop in. Here's my brand new deal for Zach Martin. We played a game on our roundtable last night positing who was going to be the first to get a new deal. I mean, I, w I thought it would have been Dak because you have to take care of Dak to literally take care of the others. But Zach may have leapfrogged him here. I mean, and, and for what it's worth, we talk all the time about how these different players, you know, they would get their big time contract in Oxnard. Zach Martin did not follow the process that Tyron Smith and, and the aforementioned Travis Frederick did. They got their deals right when they were first eligible to a camp. It took Zach a while. He had to get to that fifth year option year before they gave it to him. They never let it get too close to the sun, but he's always been a little bit more unique because he's a better player than the other two were. Interesting. I tell you what, there's always drama at Cowboys camp, but uh, I if, if I'm Jerry and Steve and I'm working and I'm finding a way right now to get Zach Martin taken care of because they have to. It's absolutely necessary. Everything else stops. Zach is the priority. Well, and if you don't take care of him, I mean, if you want to play this game, like what's that say to everybody else? You you can be a Hall of Fame player. You can literally basically make a Pro Bowl and an All Pro every single year. You can be a cornerstone of the franchise. The whole world can gas and hype you up and say you're the best in your position. And then you come to us and ask for money when you're you know barely under underpaid, and we're not going to do it. You know, like it's it's a significant domino that will fall. 
uh, relative to the others. And if you were hoping to get Steele or Biotis done, no way. They're not touching that thing until Zach Martin gets his mm-hmm. deal done because he's going to set the standard across the rest of the offensive line. I tell so, you what, I mean, you just put it a great way. I mean, seems like the Cowboys are treating Zach Martin like he's a running back. <laughs> you know, um, I – I feel for running backs in the NFL, but I don't know how anybody can like objectively disagree with this. I mean, like it's, it's just the way it goes right now. Right. Like it's like somebody being like, I don't know why anybody doesn't want to buy VCRs guys. Like why I've got a VCR for sale. Like, why won't you give me $10,000 for it? It doesn't make any sense. Like it's not of use to me the way other things are. I don't even want your DVD players. You know what I mean? Like you're that far behind with the VCR. So like um, it's tough out there for a running back. I get it which is why if you get tagged, sign it. That, that's the new, like, big-time deal if you're a running back. Take the franchise tag money, $10 million bucks, and run because it's one of the biggest paydays you're ever going to get. Tony Pollard was a genius. He was. He I was. Mean, he benefited. Yeah. He benefited. He got to it without having to pay the physical price. I mean, Josh Jacobs had, like, 400 total touches last year. Saquon's obviously been through the ringer. Obviously, Pollard's coming off the injury, but – He's another one, too. Like, you, you mentioned all the names. If you do want Pollard on a long-term deal, guess what? Get in line. Like, you got mm-hmm. all these things to figure out. And it's not just Micah Parsons. How do you know next year Osa Adigizua doesn't say, you know what, I want a new deal, too, because yeah. I'm eligible all of a sudden. I mean, there, there are all sorts of names that are going to be coming along. So you, you cannot let the line get too long. This is a line at Disneyland. People are waiting. You got to keep moving. You got to keep turning. You got to keep signing. You got to keep paying out. We know you have the money. We can't wait to see it ourselves. But yeah, Zach Martin, um, he made this. It, it, I, I feel better now. Like it was too chill. I didn't like it before. <laughs> I needed to feel a little bit flummoxed. In other words, clicks to blogging the boys. Right. Dot com all over the place <laughs> for the man that just got back from Disneyland. Who, boy, you, I know you got the fast pass. You didn't stand in line at Disneyland. Look, um, I'm not a roller coaster person. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit afraid of them. Like, we went on Pirates of the Caribbean, and there's something about like being in an enclosed thing with like water that uh-huh. freaks me out. Um, and like, they didn't even, you know, like the safety bar, like, we got in and there was no like bar. And so I looked at my wife and I was like, why is there no bar? Like, what's going to happen? And then, then they send you in like this pitch black corridor in a <laughs> boat. And, and there's like a hundred foot drop. I almost broke Cammy's hand squeezing it so hard. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm not a that's bad, the, bad That's person. a kiddie ride, man. Dude, it's, why, why do we have to be in the dark? Hey, that's my question. Like, don't why, don't let Minix give you a hard time, RJ. We were in wherever the hell we were at Super Bowl. He wouldn't ride one ride, not even the merry-go-round. He was afraid of it. There, so. I, there was open bar Jason, or rides. Hello. I've seen, I've seen Jason get scared of an F-150. There's no way he's exactly. driving the I mean, exactly that, right. that, that pot did not survive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, whatever. But uh, yeah, no fast pass for me. <laughs> Disneyland, uh, Disneyland Rock. Did you know the, some of the characters? They're too busy for autographs. You know, they're they're like, we got to get somewhere. What do you mean you got to get somewhere? There's ten thousand children here. You're here <laughs> to sign autographs, Goofy. So I don't know why that happened. But hey. we'll go back and get the autographs when we're in California yeah. next week for Cowboys training camp. And you know, all of a sudden. A lot of drama to talk about when we didn't think we were going to have any. It's going to be fun times, especially with you along at back in Oxnard. It's been, what, two years since you've gone with us to camp? I haven't been since 2019. Uh, so oh, wow. I'm, well, none of us went I'm for very, the one year. Right. Right. I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm super thankful that Rudy volunteered to be my roommate because I don't want the television on while I sleep. Um, and so, um, yeah, I don't know what. what you I know, thought you were going to share rooms that. with Tim Spence. Rudy fell on that sword. And again, Chateau RJ. That's the name of our room. And Rudy doesn't even snore anymore, from what I understand. Look at that. How about I, that? I lucked out. Yeah. You, you did You did luck out. You, you did luck out. <laughs> you, you are so lucky you get to. I, I, you've shared a room with, with all of us. And so, like, Rudy's your option. There you go. Congrats. You win. I'm pumped about it. We're going to have a good time. Yep. We're going to talk some cowboys. Uh, we're going to wear some sunscreen and some bucket hats. And, See, that's, uh, the, that's the beauty of RJ going. He will make sure that we're hydrated, that nice. we have sunscreen. Okay. Um, there will be a great debate between Dan the Man's Pizza and Toppers. Um, <laughs> I forgot the other one's name because it wasn't worthy of my knowledge. I don't need the other one in my brain. I don't need the capacity for Dan the Man. Toppers is, is where my heart belongs. Um, so I'm excited to, to revisit our old stomping ground. Uh, I'm excited. To the rudder room. 
what's the fish place that's um sea fresh the water sea fresh I'm, you're you're making that up it's not called that it's called sea fresh no, are you talking about the one right by the house or the one by the pier <laughs> by the, the one pier by is... the old house but that's it, too simple of a name. Nobody would ever name that. It's called Sea Fresh. Life. Look so, it up. It's not. Minix like knows every so. restaurant in every city in this country. We're, we're going to go to Eric Erickson's. <laughs> we're going to go to Moon Daughters Gladstones I mean? for fish. Neptune's. Um, I just, I just want to get some some fresh watermelon for the house. That's really all I want. I just want to be able to eat some watermelon, put some salt on it. You know what I mean? Like that's really all I care about. So, or and the strawberries. Maybe we get some strawberries on the side of the road. They're not. They sell a lot of them. <laughs> they, they, they really do. <laughs> They really do. We'll stop at Del Taco for you too, and Spud Nuts. Hey, and and the yeah, Spud, Spud Nuts. Nuts. And Rob Rob can eat it like it's a Metallica song again. That was wild. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, he ate that. Um, he ate that like a like my dog when he finds like a piece of meat in a bag. Like he just went to town on it. That was, uh, can, that can was you, a good can, time. Can, can you describe the noise? Can you do a a, a Rob um, impersonation here? Rob eating breakfast. It was, it, it what the problem was it was wrapped in a really like crinkly thing like what is that paper called um that you bake stuff on Foil. paper yeah uh no no it and so it was really loud and it was really big and rob was really hungry so it was like <laughs> and it was it was uh it was really intense um i thought a, <laughs> I, I thought a, a plane was landing um and it, it was really uh really special to be a part of. <laughs> special <laughs> new memories await rj Can't here we go wait. rj ochoa from bloggingtheboys.com always appreciate you jumping on with us man hey zach martin yes, yes sir yes sir it is the blitz here on 94 one san antonio sports star rj ochoa like all our guests on the buyers barricades guest line buyers barricades provides traffic control rental and sales for san antonio and beyond online at buyersbarricades.com